Um, I'm sitting here with my man Tommy Hicks. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Man, listen, appreciate you being on the show. How you feeling today? I'm feeling great. Good. I'm happy to be here and yeah. happy to <laughs> have an opportunity to talk about something that I'm passionate about, which is the cause of autism. Autism, right. And um, when your son, Austin, was six, he was diagnosed with autism. That's correct. Um, what, are, what were some of the signs, uh, Tommy? Well, around age three, my son just stopped communicating verbally. Right. He was doing just fine. He was speaking all the things that... All of the normal stuff. All of the normal right, stuff right, that right. two or three-year-olds are supposed yeah. to say. Daddy, mm -hmm. mommy, uh, my sippy cup, <laughs> uh, pick me up. Yeah. All of those things. And he was developing fine. And then all of a sudden, the language absolutely stopped. Wow. And it was... Um, Something that we had checked out at the doctor. The doctor said he's just probably experiencing a developmental delay, which is why he's not talking. Mm. It's not uncommon for children to simply let their older siblings talk for them. Right, right. And he did have two sisters that were very involved with him. And so they were trying to be his mommy. So he said, <laughs> you know, he's just letting his sisters talk for him. Mm. But the language just didn't come back. Right, right. Um, what about another son? I think you said earlier that the eye contact wasn't there. Yeah. Right. Um, another another that. thing that happened is that Austin would not maintain eye contact right. with us. Mm -hmm. He seemed to be in his own world. And at, at one point, did you blow it off as, um, not blow it off, but did you look at it as being shy? We actually looked at it as Austin being unique and different okay. and that uh, right. he doesn't like this or he doesn't like that, not knowing that the things that he was displaying were common traits mm. of autism. Of autism, right. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm so glad you shared these things because a lot of parents out there right now may not be aware that children have autism. Right. Um, and these are some of the signs. Some that of the early signs. The early signs. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges you may have had to face? Well, we faced the challenge, as I mentioned, <clears throat> of his language being gone mm -hmm. and his having to learn how to communicate all over again. Wow. Language is going along fine from birth to age three, no talking. Mm -hmm. And then around age, How long was the no talking there? The no talking with uh, making noises for things that he wanted, like, uh, uh, uh. Wow. Um, probably lasted maybe if my memory is correct, six months okay. or so. And then suddenly he began <laughs> demonstrating echolalia, watching television, watching cartoons. Right. And he would say a word or a phrase from a cartoon that right. he'd seen. Right. So we're getting hopeful, not knowing that this is You're echolalia. like, yes, yes, right, right, our right, son right. is going to talk. Yeah. And the placement of those phrases in the real world made no sense. But we didn't care because he's talking. Yeah. He's something's going something. on. Right, something's right. going on in his brain. <laughs> and so the echolalia by age five or six was <laughs> in full bloom. And Austin could quote uh, phrases from cartoons that were two to three minutes <laughs> long. Not a phrase, but a series of lines wow. um, from a cartoon and we were impressed and we thought others would feel the same. Right. Uh, but it just turned out to be, you know, who's the weird kid? <laughs> because the placement of those things wasn't appropriate in a lot of cases. Right, right. For example. But they didn't know what you've been through and where you no, come. They didn't know so they didn't get that. But that you we guys had no were like, oh, no, this is forward motion. This, this is, is forward, forward motion that he's right, saying right, something. Right, right. You know, so we began <laughs> experiencing his echolalia getting to you know, incredible levels where he could quote the beginning of The Lion King <laughs> when he was about six or seven and go all the way to the middle of the movie wow. before his memory ran out. Wow. Literally from the beginning when Scar says at the first opening of The Lion King, he says, <laughs> life's not fair, mm. is it? And so uh, he would go on and on and on right. and we would tell people, Instead of hiding this, what we thought was a gift, we would tell people, he's doing the Lion King. Right. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> and so... Uh, Isn't that interesting that he uh, remembered that quote, life is not fair. That that's is, deep. That is yeah, That's deep, deep right? That's I never deep. thought of it that yeah, way. Yeah, that's deep. And uh, because something was in him. 
Mm. You know, uh, I think everything's spiritual. Something was big. Oh, absolutely. Um, mm. You had those challenges, um, but you turned those challenges into something absolutely beautiful. Uh, you wrote a song called Acceptance about Austin's autism. Yes. Um, and what, what was amazing, and I think beautiful, I'm trying not to cry, because you know I'm a dad, mm -hmm. and you wrote it the way you felt Austin would have written that song. Right. Um, how did you... Precisely. How, what made you think Austin would have wrote those lyrics? Austin came home from school yeah. one day in about the sixth grade, seventh grade, <laughs> somewhere in there. And by this time, his language uh, is developing right. uh, at a rate of about maybe a, what a five or six year old could, could do on his own. Okay. And he struggled to get these words out to express himself because it, the sixth grade level, he's still doing a lot of echolalia okay. from cartoons and stuff. But he's riding home in the car with me, and he <laughs> says to me, struggling with every word, he says, Dad, 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 they, they won't be, be my friends. Mm. And mm. when he said it the second time, and I really understood what he was talking about, right. I was... Floored. I was floored. I, I was broke. hurt. All of that. Cried the whole nine. Um, this is your son. But this is my son, and he's at school. And um, now you know when you send him off to yeah. school what he's going through. Oh, yeah. That's well, uh, that That's has come full circle also because he's in a world of kids like himself. He goes to Carter Vocational High School. Right. But uh, at this time, he was in another school and in portions of the day, he was mainstreamed with the typical kids, right. and this is the this is the opportunities that he got to be rejected. Right. So when he when he gets in the car, he's sharing his uh, daily experiences. Right. So you're saying in your head, if Austin could speak clearly, this, this is, is what, what he would say. Would say. So wow. that's how acceptance was born. The song wow. was born out of what <laughs> Austin would say well, about his daily experience right. with autism if he could say it. Right. So the initial line of the song, life can be so lonely mm. when you're not the same. Oh, wow. People walk right by you. No one speaks your name. Speaks your name. Wow. That's something that Austin lives every day. Right. Because people think when someone has autism, that they don't have anything to say. Right. So what they do, oh, they if they do say thing. anything yeah. at all to them, they say, hey, Austin, and they keep it moving. And Austin has a lot more to Austin say. Austin has a lot more to and say. And communicate. I'm and you just have to it. give him yes. uh, opportunity to process, be patient with his processing and communication. Right. And like some of the beautiful people at my church, St. Peter's World Outreach Center, right. have discovered that if you give Austin a, a few minutes of your time, you can actually have a conversation with him. Yes. You don't have to just walk by him and say, right. hey, Austin, and think you've done your duty. Exactly. I'll oh, I like that. Him. Think you've done your duty. Think you've done your duty. I said hello to the special right. needs kid. But if you stay and say, hey, how you been doing? Right. And Austin oh, this is so good, Tom. You know, comes out with, uh, right. been doing good, doing fine. And he has more he good. wants to say. Yeah. If you just stay there. Yeah, just this stay so there. Good. So, Austin, yeah. what have you been doing lately? Well, and then the way he processes, he'll repeat your question. Right. Well, um, what have I been doing lately? Um, oh, wow. I've been doing um, my drawing, and I've been playing golf. And so if you just stay and listen, he'll give you a conversation. There's a brain in there. And not just that, he wants to talk he to wants you. To talk. He wants to share. And there's right. a constant smile on Austin's face, but trust yeah. me, if you have just... <laughs> really giving Austin the short end of the stick, yeah. he'll tell us later on in a way or I'm shape sure. of a form that, you know, does so-and-so like me? Oh, wow. Oh, man, this is so good. Or, Tommy. you know, wow. does this person Amen. this or that yeah. about me? Yes. I've, wow. I've had him ask a question like that before, which gives me to wow. know right. That he's interpreting other people's right. behavior. 
Right. That's the best thing. Yeah. And, and it goes back, let's rewind a little bit, how God works. Mm -hmm. First line from the Lion King, mm -hmm. Austin says, life is not fair. Isn't that deep? That is deep. Isn't that deep? That is deep. Because we Isn't were something? the folks uh, who were going to raise a child in a Christian home. And so by every practical reason that we can fathom, our child should be born healthy, have all his faculties, right. and so on. But God chose us to raise this child, this child. with autism. And he knew something right away mm -hmm. that what he was going to have to deal with the holy spirit came to him and said hey look life is not fair right and prepared austin um, to make it easier for you all to do this together and As to a team, i think it's fantastic and to not only yeah go through this journey of autism with our son but be an inspiration and help the other yes. parents out there who are just coming into the journey That's right. and are struggling, and we can help them through right. their journey. Right. Our pastor, uh, Bishop J.C. Hash, always says that your mess can become your message. Right. So what was a terrible mess for us in 2001 and 2002 at uh, the beginning stages of our son's diagnosis has become a message that we can give to other people first experiencing autism now and it's a message of hope. And it's a message through a beautiful song called Acceptance. Yeah. Um, and now I see how you understood what Austin would say because you talked to Austin daily. Absolutely. Um, giving him a chance to talk, giving him a chance to express his feelings like a lot of people don't do with young men and women that's dealing with that. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, another fantastic thing that uh, you experienced, you got a chance to uh, record this song with uh, one of the family members of the royal family of gospel, Juan Winans. How did that come Oh, out? my gosh. Uh, first of all, big shout out to Juan Winans yeah. and Lisa Winans. Yeah. Uh, two incredible people with, honestly, two of the biggest hearts that I have ever met. Right. I met them through business uh, in banking. I worked in the banking industry. Okay. And uh, when I was given a referral uh about the Winans when the name was even spoken I said I stuttered I said Winans I said the Winans and not, the not person, the way in the Winans <laughs> and the person that referred them to me said yes Winans but yeah. we need you to kind of you know chill chill a little bit <laughs> and I was so excited so yeah. when I finally was talking with these folks over the phone um, I handled their banking business and one thing led to another and I was doing a Christmas concert at Dillard's department store right. and my business with them at about the same time was coming to a close and I was just like oh man I can't believe I'm not going to be doing anything for them anymore this is it <laughs> and I'm thanking them and thanking them and they just hit me with the big news well Tommy uh, we got a surprise for you we've decided to come to your Christmas concert and I almost dropped the wow. phone I was so wow. excited they came to my Christmas concert at Dillard's, and while I was performing, I introduced them, and they agreed to do a song. And all my friends had out their cell phones, and they recorded them, and I was going around saying, put those phones down, you get me no trouble with my new friends. <laughs> right. So, anyway, it was just a beautiful That's start wow. to a beautiful friendship. And then in Fantastic. 2014, I went to the Wyndham Championships, because I'm a big golf fan, and... Ernie Els was on the practice tee, mm -hmm. and he was the last golfer out on the practice tee, practicing with his caddy. And I go, oh my gosh, Ernie Els. And all of a sudden it hits me, boom, Ernie has a son with autism. I've seen his story. Right. And so before I could even stop my mouth, the words are already coming out. Mr. Els, we have something in common. And his caddy turned around like he was going to slap me down. <laughs> and I said, my son has autism. And Ernie turned around and looked at me. He gave his driver to his caddy and walked straight for me. Wow. And everybody within an earshot, it was something? almost a collective Isn't gasp. Here wow. comes Ernie Els. And I'm thinking, oh my God, here comes Ernie Els. What am I going to say? Right. He comes up with that big South African accent. He's a tall guy. Yeah. He says, tell me about your boy. And so I tell him about Austin. He tells me about his son, Ben. And so all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit interrupts me and he says, tell him about the song you wrote. I go, Mr. Els, uh, 
I wrote a song about my son's autism. I, I perform uh, singing all over <laughs> in weddings and uh, do a concert at right. department stores at Christmas time. And uh, he said, okay, enough. Sing the song. And when he said that, no. I literally said almost out loud, I go, right. now? He says, now. Right. And when he said, sing the song, right. the Spirit of God said that to me. I was really more in shock <laughs> than anything else. So I obeyed. I start singing the song. Right. And I guess my relief was that the people standing within an earshot of us once right, again right, right. started nodding their heads and smiling. And I heard a guy say, hey, that's good. That sounds really oh, good. Oh, man, that's beautiful. Yeah. And so the next thing good I song. knew, middle of the song, I couldn't believe that I held his attention with it that long. Ernie puts up his hand like this, which I'm a, I was sure the next words would be, that's really great. See you later. I've got to get back. <laughs> yeah. So nice to meet you. Yeah. He stops me and then he moves his head out beyond me and he goes, Lisa. And a lady pops her head out and she says, what? He says, come. And so she comes over and I go, oh my gosh, I saw that. I saw that piece about Ernie and Liesl Els. That's his wife. Right. And so this lady comes over, Liesl Els, another wonderful person. He tells her about the song. He says, Liesl, this guy here is a professional singer, and he's written a song about autism, and I think it'd be great to have him to come out to our big event in Vegas in the fall and sing the song. I almost shook Ernie Els' arm wow. off. I go, yes, yes, let's do that. Right. Yes. Right. And so the next <laughs> thing I knew, we exchanged information. And the head of their foundation, Els oh, for Autism, wow. contacted me and said, we need you to send us the song straight away. And so... And uh, you ended up in Vegas. I went, I went up in Vegas, but the big piece wow. was that Juan Winans assisted me. Back to the story about him and our meeting. Right. They said, we need you to record the song. After I sent them the song, they said, we right. need you to professionally record the song. Right. And send it to us because the board... Uh, RBC Centura, Ernie's sponsor, right. wants to hear the song professionally recorded. Right. I said, sure. I hung up the phone and go, God, what am I going to do? Right. And the Lord said, call Juan Wines. Wow. So I called Juan. Wow. He answered the phone. I had called him on other occasions, and he's a busy guy. So the fact that he answered the phone alone was a miracle. It was big. Right. It was big. Right. So he answered the phone, and I start spitting out this story, and I'm going 100 miles a minute, and Juan says, Tommy, 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 listen. I got you. I got you. <laughs> This is going to be a great opportunity for you. I tell you what, I don't even want you to worry about the money. I got this one. Come on. And paid for the session. He took care of all That's the sessions. Time. There, I think, were four sessions, maybe in all. Uh, he and his wife did the background vocals. He got top industry musicians like himself and another gentleman, Shane Hill of the country band Sawyer Brown, right, right. to play my score. Right. And Juan did the post production. And it was a a great big so, and everything came together. Everything you came together. Up in Vegas. Yes. And, uh, and Juan had to so, had wow. to put up with me because being the consummate professional he is, he knew the timeline and when he was gonna finish. It's a couple days before the song was due to the people out in Vegas. And <laughs> I'm thinking, we're not gonna make it. Juan's like, Tommy, I got it. <laughs> Calm down. Right. So that's the that's the beauty of a person like Juan, that he was not only giving, but he was patient with me right. in the process. And Ernie Els as well. And Ernie. And, and Ernie. it all just fell in place. It all and, fell in place. Um, where do we go from here? Um, because I want people to know about your story, um, the love you have for your son, mm. and the song. It's beautiful. I heard it. And at the end of the interview, we're going to play a little bit of the song. Okay. But I want to get the word out. What next? What, what, where, where are we going from here? Well, that's interesting that you yeah. would say that because uh, just last week <laughs> I began uh, some introductory talks with the Johnson family singers that were on the show Little Big Shots with right. Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey, right. And we're in the talking stages now of their group recording the song. The song is what? Wow. And I'm are really you excited. Are you a chance to record that. with them? I am actually more interested in the song taking on a new vocalist or vocalists uh, because your, 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 your biggest interest is getting the song out. Is getting the song out, getting the message out. So if out. the Johnson family, who has a bigger name, can get the song out and the message, you're just about saving lives I am about and helping families. Helping families. Gotcha. And they can communicate Fantastic. the song vocally. 
uh, with fresh, youthful voices. Yeah. I'm excited about that. I'm not a marketer, so being that I'm not a marketer, I'm right. a singer and a songwriter. Uh, right. The part of the marketing, if uh, the next people can take it like the Johnson family and their management group and take the baton and run with right. it, I, I'm, I'm all but for it. But what a blessing that is. What a blessing. That that, that all of these things line up. I mean, you, you go <laughs> That's from, the incredible part. That's the God right, part. Right. Because there's a portion that I am to do and that I'm to pray and then God just opens the door right. from, for one opportunity That's what love to the does. next. That's, That's what, what love, love does. does. Your love for um, Austin. Um, the fact that you decided, you and your wife, we're not embarrassed. We want to tell this story. Yeah. We love this dude. Yeah. And one thing you don't know, folks, is that Young men and women with autism has a story to tell. They want to talk. They want to be treated just like you and I. Absolutely. And, uh, they I, want acceptance. Right. They want acceptance. And God opened the door to make sure the world knows about this Absolutely. and how to get it done. But that is fantastic, bro. Um, I know you're feeling like on top of the world right now. I am feeling I'm like I'm on you. cruise control. Right. And when you're on cruise right. control... You know that you're going to a destination, yes, sir. But you don't even have to touch the you wheel. Touch the wheel, man. That's so I fantastic. think that the Lord is taking this to the next level, and I'm enjoying the ride, <laughs> and I'm excited for what is going to happen next. I'm yes. just trying to walk this thing out from one stage to the next. Absolutely. And God is a God that shows you the next portion of what you're to do, but until you obey the next portion of right. what you don't, you, what you're supposed to do. The next piece doesn't come along. So. Yeah, you gotta sit still for that that that, that next step. Let yeah. God or your steps. And I, and I did that. Tommy, that was good, man. Um, appreciate you having having you on the show. Um, we're gonna listen to a little bit of acceptance right now. Okay. And we're gonna see the hands of Austin. Uh, <laughs> so take a listen. We'll see you next week. Got a chance to catch up with Austin. How you doing, handsome? Good. Um, man, look at your art. It's fantastic. Tell us about it. Who is that? Oh, that is Simon as Batman. So that's Simon yes. from the Chipmunks as Batman. Yes. All right, cool. Let's go to another one. Who is this here? That's Max from the Goofy movie. He's using a fishing pole to go fishing. Wow. It's good stuff. And this is Donald Duck. Yes. Wow. That's Donald Duck playing a trombone. He really does like to play music. Right. How does it make you feel when you draw, Austin? Well, does it make you feel good? Yes, it does make me feel really good when it makes me happy. Good, good. And you won a golf tournament, I understand. Yes. I wow. Did. What would that feel like, man? Winning a golf tournament. Well, it feels like it feels like oh, um, hitting the ball really hard. Or it feels like having lots of fun. Absolutely. It's that. I want what you want the chance to live and love. But here in this world, few people know the meaning of acceptance. So simple and so easy to see what someone here might be. It's like.